What do you do when the booker doesn't tell you what they want from the finish? Who goes up? Who is going under in this match? How do you even navigate a situation like this? We're breaking it all down next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about professional wrestling and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe right now. Or take your support of this channel to the next level and help me reach my goal for this year of 100 patrons. If you want to help me keep this a weekly channel here on YouTube, Join us over on the Till We Make It Patreon, where there are three tiers of support. At the apprentice level, you'll unlock things like excerpts from my books, Seven Keys to Becoming a Better Performer, Toolbox, Building Better Professional Wrestling, and more. At the Troubadour tier, you'll unlock my past podcast series like Kayfabe 2.0, a podcast I made for fellow professional wrestlers. And at the master tier, you'll be part of our monthly Zoom calls. You'll unlock one of my seminars on the first of every month. And you'll have things like early and ad-free access to the videos that are on this channel. It'll be your name popping up in the credits at the end of every Till We Make It. To support what I'm doing here at Till We Make It, just jump on the link, which is down below in the descriptus. It'll take you to my Patreon page where you can start unlocking nearly eight hundred exclusive posts overflowing with wrestling knowledge for you. Sometimes, instead of doing their job, a booker will simply leave their job to be done by the wrestlers. And in a moment, I want to explain to you how I assess those situations when I'm in them, as well as a two-part golden rule for navigating these situations successfully most of the time. But I want to start by saying, it is the booker's minimum responsibility to tell the talent who's going over and who's going under in every single match. They don't need to get super specific all the time about exact run times of matches or a flash pin or roll up versus an impact move or a finisher. There's always room for some flexibility and creative input from the talent, but it's the booker's minimum responsibility to give the marching orders about who's going over and who's going under. And, once someone from creative abdicates or otherwise delegates out that power to the wrestlers, they will never fully get it back. And once the line between creative and talent has been blurred, it will not just magically unblur itself. Pro wrestling bookers who allow for lots of flexibility, who are willing to take input from others and then edit and revise, sometimes on the fly, are often said to book in pencil. Whereas those bookers out there who are a little more rigid in their writing style and give very specific marching orders to the wrestlers are often thought to book in ink. And there are pros and cons to both styles of booking wrestling. And I'm not here to debate those. Not right now. That's a whole different video. But I can tell you my style is to book in ink because I believe every match on every card must have a purpose and a goal it is trying to fulfill. And to ensure that that goal is ultimately achieved, you need to be very specific about things like the runtime and the finish, and at the very least, who is going over. That is the minimum responsibility of the booker. So, when a booker just happens to breeze past you and your opponent for the evening and says something like, ah, well, you know, it doesn't really matter, so how about you guys just figure out who goes over tonight, okay? And then they go on their merry way, they are failing to do even the most basic responsibility of booking. Once it's been laid in your lap, what are you going to do? Whenever I'm one of the two wrestlers who have been tasked with deciding who goes over, what's going on out in the ring, I assess the situation by asking three questions. And in order to answer these correctly, I have to take on an objective point of view. I have to pull myself out of the micro view of just this one match and look at the macro view of the company I am working for, the card that we are on as a whole, and the market that we are playing to. And I ask myself, question number one, who needs the help the most tonight in this market? That is to say, which wrestling character needs to be elevated a little bit tonight 
in front of this specific audience? And here are ways I've gone about answering that exact question. Well, if my opponent has wrestled in this market now five times in a row and taken a loss every single time, I think the right answer to the question is that character needs the help. Not my character, their character. So they're going over. You have to look at it in terms of which character needs the help on this particular night, given the totality of the card in front of the audience we are playing to. The second of the three things that I assess is any future booking plans that I am privy to. For example, if I happen to know my character is going to be built up later this year as the top contender to the championship, then maybe right now is not the right time for my character to be going under. Any future booking plans that I or my opponent happen to be privy to supply critical context for trying to make this decision. When I'm one of the wrestlers who's been tasked with just deciding the finish to my own match, the last thing I assess is any information I have available to me from outside the fictional world of professional wrestling. For example, maybe your opponent just found out that she's pregnant and she's planning to take time off very soon. Well, someone that's about to disappear for a period of time off of the roster probably doesn't need a win right now. In fact, they should be building up the people who are going to have to carry things during her absence. So maybe the right move is she's going under. Or maybe you happen to be in a situation where you've already made the decision that you are giving your notice to this company after the next event because you're tired of their flaccid and pointless booking. Well, if you've already made that decision, then put somebody over on your way out. You might know that you're leaving, even if you're the only person who knows this at the time, make the decision that is right for business and then assess all of those things. Who is it that needs the help the most tonight in front of this audience? Consider any future booking plans that you are privy to and then also give some thought to any circumstances you know of from outside the fictional world of wrestling to help you reach a fairly objective decision. And know that every single factor that makes up your decision need not be revealed, not even to your opponent. When all else fails, remember this two-part golden rule. If there is no chance you and your opponent will be rematched in the future, just put the baby face over, whoever that happens to be, and call it a day. Or, if it is likely that you and your opponent will be rematched in the future, put the heel over, whoever that may be. Leave something unresolved out there so you've got something to pick up and work with the next time you share the ring. Now you've heard from me, I want to hear from you. Has this ever happened to you? Tell me the story down below in the comments. If you're interested in the creative process and the underlying architecture of professional wrestling, check out my book, Toolbox, Building Better Pro Wrestling. It's on Amazon as well as on Audible. And appearing on screen right now is a playlist of videos I know you will enjoy. Click on it right now so you can keep on learning. There's also a link to my Patreon page. Come join us.